the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kid stealing, woo, wheeling, dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators. You're talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kid stealing, wheeling, dealing, limo jet flying. We Rick flaring. I'm fresh to death, I'm Paul Barry, not at all scary When I open like Betty Wops and find to these urkels that's going in like a carry shot Woo! I'm going in like a Mary Pop off that Mary Crop at the top flow at the Marriott So questioning me is like questioning you See we the best dressed so come and get blessed with the crew Not one but two, different ways to slaughter your crew Committed tat across the chest, I guess she blessed with the truth People want to see them checks, representation of proof Living through my elders trying to resonate to the youth But ain't nothing to get my flash on Legevity is heavily embedded in my melanin Lame in terms, I last long My ground repetitive, I'm smoother than real silk Lyrical cash cow, who can't cry but spilled milk We in here, you talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We Rick flaring on them niggas We Rick flaring This preparation with greatness In the street full of fakeness It's really up for the taking See life is what happened to you More so how you take it Don't get stripped of your knowledge And mentally leave you naked I like to live otherwise I'm sorry that I'm fresh to death I put the polo and apologize See black sun We ain't nothing like the mother guys Quit to socialize You organize Then we mobilize off the deep end like a scuba diver And no confusion, just keep it pushing like Uber drivers Woo! Business fresh, just like a supervisor In a Gucci visor, can't find a smoother rhymer You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying We Rick flaring on them niggas We Rick flaring on them niggas You talking to the Rolex wearing Diamond ring wearing Kiss stealing, willing dealing, limo jet flying Captain Petty, but we know that the sergeants are with the smoke Speculate, just tell me what is we doing Get into it, okay, look, I'ma say this and keep it moving My boy Scotty, man, he off of the leash Black grad, paying college, I'm glad that he called me Walk it, cause we all been taught that talk is cheap Even primetime knows Scott for the HBCU streets What is going on, everybody? It's Friday. All right. It is Friday. I'm in the building, you know, doing a live show. Listen, I do apologize, guys. I know I have been really, really weak with my live shows, but I am in class currently. So listen, 
Gotta educate myself. Okay, gotta get gotta get my game up. All right. So what's good, everybody? Real quick, uh, before I get into everything, I want you know I got I got bills to pay. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you listen, are the only you participant in the conference. If you have it, first of all, make sure you follow me on IG and Twitter. My IG, I think it's a little bit better than my Twitter, but make sure you follow me IG at Twitter, all script underscore TV. You already know what it is. All right. Make sure you become a member. All right. I put the membership in the bottom in the in the comments below. Make sure you become a member. Uh, three tiers, $4.99, $9.99, $19.99. But if you ain't paying for ESPN Plus, you're probably not going to pay for me. So I understand. All right. So I'm not going to say nothing. And last but not least, shout out to Miss Tiffany. She hooked me and my girl up with some shirts. The JSU is JSU's homecoming this week. So I, I thought it would be good. Uh, shout her out. She sent me this junk. If y'all can see the whole thing. Pretty dope. Got the Mississippi joint. Got the Jackson State joint on it. Shout out to Miss Tiffany for that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So that's love. Appreciate that. And, you know, anybody else. And shout out to Mr. Nash. I know y'all been seeing my all corn joint back here. Mr. Nash, uh, he sent me that. Uh, well, he gave it to me personally. You know what I'm saying? So just want to tell him thank you for that as well. So and he got me a little all corn hat. So that's what it is. But today you already know what the topic is. We are getting into DN Isaiah Land from FAMU. All right, we're going gonna, gonna to break his film down. It's not going to be too long of a film session because a lot of his stuff, if I'm being honest, he has a high motor. All right, his stuff, a lot of a lot of his sex comes from his high motor. He he is a energy guy. He will run you down. He doesn't stop. He's very, very relentless. All right, so I'm going to show a couple plays, and we're going to get this thing popping. Let me share my screen real quick. Do, do, do. All right. Share my screen, share my screen, going to share my screen. All right, let me get, so let me get my mouse ready. You know, I'm, I'm kind of bougie over here, so I got, I ain't got no official mic stand. So I got to turn this box into my mic stand. Bam! Watch me now, watch me work. All right, let me get my little pro mouse going. Application. All right. So I can, you know, zoom in and do all my fancy, smancy stuff. All right. Let's get it popping. All right. So first, Isaiah Land Strengths. All right. Isaiah Land Strengths. So like I said, uh oh. So look, this is up. Isaiah Land is over here. All right. This is him up here up top. All right. And when I tell you he is a high motor guy, he is a high motor guy. Look, so he really gets ran. Out, but listen, if we're being honest, the tackle does his job. He allows the quarterback to step up, but Isaiah Land will not give up. Look at that. Look at that. That's that's just effort. That is just straight. I want it more than you. OK, so if you ever think he is blocked, he's not. If you ever think that Isaiah Land is blocked, look look how far this man goes for this sack. All right? Look how far this man comes around for this sack. Yeah, people say he got five sacks, but he earned every bit of them. Okay? Earned every bit of them. He is a hustle, high motor player. Okay? Full of energy. Now, this is probably one of his best moves that he did uh, during this game. He's down here at the bottom right here. All right, going one-on-one -on -one with this tackle. I'm going to play it and I'm going to rewind it, all right? Boom, gets him, all right? So it's his hand placement for me, right? Because he is not the strongest guy, and you'll see that going, uh, going forward in some other clips that I have. He's not the strongest dude, all right? But what he does do well is he uses his hands very well. All right. Now, the tackle did, I believe, get on the inside of him on this one, but he he pushed him out, swimmed it. See that? It's called a push and pull. All right. You can call it a push and pull, push and shove, whatever. But it looks like a little push and pull he did. Got got through it, got around and uses his speed to finish off the play. All right. The, all right. This I love I, this is one of my favorite plays I saw by, I freaking love this. This is just a straight speed rush with a dip. This is what I'm, listen, he's down, let me show y'all where he's at. He's down here, all right? He's down here at the bottom. 
This is when you when I say when I tell when I when I break down DNs, right? And I tell you you have to learn how to dip, you have to learn how to get around the edge. This is what I'm talking about. Watch this. Boom, swims him. All right. Watch how he leans, dips. Ah, that's come on, Glenn. That's how you do that thing right there. That's nice. Okay. That is that is pitcher perfect. Nice. The only thing is he's a little off balance. All right. He has to stick this leg out and drive in a little bit harder. Come harder with the rip. Come up with the rip. But other than that, this is nice. Come on, man. This is easy. This is against South Florida. All right. This is against South Florida. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect spin move. All right. I, I mean, it's a speed rush. Perfect speed rush. All right. It's it, this is high level stuff, man. I'm trying to tell y'all. Like, I, I'm gonna watch it. You gotta watch it at full speed. It, it's lovely. It's lovely. Watch the hand placement again. Hit some with the dab in. Boom. Set, look. Gets the tackle moving inside to set up the speed rush. Uses his hands. Come on now. Come on now. Uses his hands like he's supposed to. Swims them. Boom, boom. And then I'm going to speed and I'm going to dip and I'm going to get around you. Come on, man. He has to get lower. He just has to get a little lower on this on this dip. All right. He has to get a little lower on this dip. Let me get a little. Hold on. Let's see. If he gets a little lower on this dip. He probably gets underneath of him, and he can flatten it out a little bit more to get to this running back. I mean, get to the quarterback. But, man, listen, that's nice. That's nice right there. See how he comes off, off balance? All right? Because just he beat, him, he beat him well, but he still has to fight back in. He has that outside foot. This outside foot right here. Oh. This outside foot has to be pushing back into the defender. So there, so his weight and his weight are counterbalancing. So he can kind of flatten out. He can kind of flatten out and get to that quarterback still under control. But this is nice. This is nice. That's that's nice. That listen, that's 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 nice right there. Woo. All right, here's another one. All right. This is just straight uh athleticism. All right, straight athleticism. Boom, hits him. All right, but you see. All right, the, the tight, the tight, the tight. I mean, the tight end. The tackle does his job by running him off. But this is where you got to get. This is where you got to learn to get the hands off of you, right? Because if he chops down right there, he chops down. He has to dip, and he got to rip. Got to dip and rip. All right, he has to dip and rip right here. All right, and get and get that flatter. But it's he has that speed rush is probably his best move, but. What, see, what people fail to realize is he, he has the moves. He has moves to go with this speed rush. All right, so I'm going to let it play forward. He has the moves to go with that speed rush, but he has to get his hands off him. But look at the effort. Look at the effort. Look at the effort. Look at the e it's effort. All right, high motor. Now, I Isaiah Land's improvements, all right? Once again, like I said, he is not a power, all right? He, this is him down here. He's not power at all. All right, so this, okay, and he does do this a lot. If you if you watch some other stuff, he likes to jump in. He he'll okay. So how how it works is that you'll set him to the outside to see if you can beat him inside to get to the quarterback. All right, so he'll lose containment every now and again. Uh, he did this against South Carolina State, but it didn't come back to bite him. I think he did about I think he did about two or three times in South Carolina State where he would fake up the field cut back into the field but the thing that I don't I think he wasn't supposed to do this is because of the fact that this guy is not stunting with him because usually when one goes in you want one to go out um and since he's not I think he just did this off his own if I'm not mistaken um so I don't I don't pretty I don't know the play so don't don't quote me on that all right but he tries to come in get sealed and then he gives he gives that lane all right and this is another thing when I, and this is probably, I think it's my last play. And this is the, uh, the power play. This is why I tell you he's not a power player. All right. So you can, it's, this could be simply because looking at it from the other side over here, 
this could simply be a containment, all right? Just, hey, keep your outside shoulder free and make sure nobody gets to the outside of you. So he's not trying to do a bull rush or anything like that. But it's the way he gets it's the way he gets handled. All right. You gotta you gotta put some yeah, you come on, you can't that that can't happen. All right, you gotta put some bricks in your pocket, you gotta you gotta stand your ground, you gotta hold him up. He literally drives you probably about five yards. All right. So this is probably his biggest issue is that he doesn't have the power to really just sit, to sit on that tackle and hold him and, and hold his position. Uh, but other than that, man, listen, I, I like Isaiah. I like Isaiah, and the reason I like him and the difference and I, I, the difference between him and a Jordan Lewis is you can see his production while getting blocked. That was my biggest knock. That was my biggest knock on Jordan Lewis is that you don't see the protection. Uh, he's too fast. And you don't see the production from. Let me kind of take this down though. All right. That's that was my biggest knock on Jordan Lewis and everybody was so high on him. But watching the film, you can clearly see that Jordan Lewis is not the same player getting blocked. Right. And that's why I like a Houston. That's why I like Isaiah Land is because you see the production even while being blocked. Now, not being blocked is probably the dumbest thing you could do with either one of these boys because they're so athletic, they're so fast, they get to you so quickly that why are you going to make it that much easier for them? But when you're talking about an Isaiah and a, a Houston, they have they have moves, they have the speed rush. I think if I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I think Isaiah has a slight edge over Houston because the lack, because of the scheme that he's in, right? And what I mean by that is, as Houston is going to get sacks just based off of miscommunication, right? Just based off pure, hey, they're sending six, they're sending seven. I don't know who to block. I blocked down. I was supposed to block out. Here comes Houston running off the edge, right? Well, FAMU doesn't run that type of scheme. They don't blitz six. They don't blitz seven. You know, they, they really send their front four and let everybody else do what they do on the back end. So he has to legit apply pressure off the just off their lineup, off their assignment, who he has in front of him. So he legit has to beat his man on either every given play or every other play. So for me, that just accounts a little bit more with what Isaiah has to do and how he's doing it and, and how he gets his sacks. Now, does he beat his man off the ball every time? And, you know, no, like I can show you like the South Carolina State play. He didn't beat his man. He actually lost that battle. But the effort that he shows and still continuing off the play, still hustling. That's how you get those effort and energy sacks. And that's how you end up with five instead of two, because three of them are, are just literally chase downs. Like three of his sacks, probably two or three of his sacks are just straight trace downs of him, you know, coming off the edge, the, the play going away from him, the quarterback going away from him. He just runs them down and does, and does something special like that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, um, I, I wouldn't mind having either one of them. OK, I know a lot of people tell me, like, who would you want? Um, I really wouldn't mind having either one of them, uh, to be totally honest with you. I think they both going to get the job done. They're both ha they both have to be blocked. That's what you want from a DN. You want a DN that you're 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 worrying about him on every play. OK, who has Isaiah? Who's blocking Houston? You know what I'm saying? Even with Jordan, like you don't want to let Jordan go unblocked. That's the only thing. You know what I'm saying? He he doesn't scare you block, but he definitely is scare you unblocked. So just a little stuff like that. All right. So I just want to jump in here, give a couple breakdown, give a little breakdown on um Isaiah Land. Not too much, not too much. But the kid is good. The kid is special. Uh, do I think he's gonna be a DN at the next level? No. Uh 6'4, 2 what, 230, 240. Um Nah, I can't see it. Uh, he, he's just, he's too much of a tweener. His body type is too much of a tweener. Uh, but the, the but the way the league is going, you know, they need people who can just run and, and get after the ball. So it's not to say he can't go in as a linebacker, not to say he can't go in a, in the box safety, uh, but I, maybe a linebacker probably be his best bet being 6'4", six, 6'3", six, you know what I'm saying? But as a DN, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, all right? Let me see these comments, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, put your family application in, Mr. Campbell, and I will give you a call if you qualify. Yeah, whatever. I'm surprised they didn't put weight on him at 6'4. Stephen Campbell, do 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 do. 
Uh, let me see. Uh, Blue Bus, he's already, he's already gone for 185, 215, 220. You, you got a new weight training nutrition program for these guys. He was about 20 pounds. So if you put them on opposite teams, Houston gets less production. Um, That's a really good question, Gregory. That's a really – I don't think – I don't think he gets – I think he'll be where he's at, seven and a half sacks. I think he'll be seven, six and a half. I, I don't think – yeah, I, 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 I don't want to disrespect Houston like that because I don't think he – He's just a scrub because if you take him, no, 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 I don't think that. Do I? Do I think he will? He will probably have the same amount, about five and a half, six sacks. I, I wouldn't, because at the end of the day, he's still a he's still a problem to block because of his speed, because of his aggression, because of his speed, the way he flies around. He's just a hard person to block. So at the end of the day, Houston is still going to have six, five, five or six sacks easily, easily. Like yeah, so I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that past. I wouldn't put that past him to say he would be worse on any team. And I think, and I think if we're being honest, Isaiah will probably have the same amount of sacks because if you if you put him, if you put him and Houston on the same team, you really don't know who to block. Like if you have both of them boys coming off the edge, you really, I mean, you like, you like looking at like, damn, this is a dead end. Like I have no choice. I, I got to take the L on one of these boys because you can't double either. Can't double both of them. You can probably chip both of them, but you damn sure can't double both of them. So it's just diff difficulties like that. So yeah. And then when you add, and even with family, when you add number 91, you know, he's a problem. You add Savion coming back. He's a problem. So it just makes it a little easier for uh, Isaiah Land to do his thing. Was calling me. Oh. So yeah, can you take the slot on shirt down? <laughs> no offense. Uh, he's playing linebacker. If he, if he went to, that would be nice to keep both of them on the field. That would be nice to have uh, Houston at linebacker and then Isaiah at, at DN. Yeah, you can't beat that. That that would be really nice. Hey, that's a good point, TJ. That's a real good point. That's a real good point. So, and he got and he got the he got the ejection being hitting the hitting the quarterback in the head. So, you know, he stay around a quarterback. So, that's a good point. He could possibly. But uh we'll see. But I mean, when you really when you break down that um when you break down the Jackson State, when you break down Jackson State and you watch the defense, you have to block Houston. Like that I don't understand any team that goes into a game and not focused on blocking Houston. The rest of those guys, you got to just take the L's with, but you can't let Houston disrupt your offense. And it's, it will be the same thing with Isaiah. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is, is that with, with both of these defensive teams, it's not just the outside guys that will beat you. It's the inside interior guys that will beat you. So you got to worry about both of them. So now you're looking at, okay, do I, do I leave them on the island and then focus my running back on picking up in the middle? Or do I chip the outside? Excuse me. If I do, I chip the outside and and let the interiors do what they do. So it, it's a lot. It goes. Into, it's it's a lot of planning and pre planning when you when you're scouting these guys and you're going against these guys. They, they're definitely something special. The bigger. the bigger question is when the all swag defense is announced, which school will have the most players? Definitely Jackson State. Uh, I I think I think you're the secondary. The secondary is definitely going to be uh, FAMU based because you're going to have you're probably going to have Coyer uh, and Marquise Bell at um at safety in in the DB position. You're going to I don't know I don't know if they're going to give it to Nugget because he hasn't been thrown at. That's a good question, Mr. Campbell. But I'll tell you one thing: uh, you're definitely going to have Isaiah and James at, at the DNs. And I think when it comes to 91 in uh, either Cornish Miller or or um. Or Owens or Evans, I can never get that kid's name right. Antoine Owens or Evans, um, I think you're going to have a, a a back and forth with that one. Interior, I I I I like I like Owens, I really do. Owens, Evans, whatever that kid's name is, I like him. Uh, I would definitely take him on my D line. Uh, I, I tell you, who won't be? It shouldn't be no offensive lineman from Jackson State. I tell you that much. If if I'm being honest, Tony Gray probably made the thing off that off that one block alone, but. Uh, I wouldn't take nobody offensive line from there for real, for real. I ain't even gonna hold you. Um, Owen, yeah, Owens, Owen, Owen, Owens, yeah. So I'll I'll take him. Um, linebackers. Okay, this is what's gonna happen with that. They're gonna give it to Aubrey Miller because of the of his stats. You can't. Uh, 
Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, it's, it's literally going to be those two. It's literally, it's literally going to be those two teams pretty much filling the stat sheet on when it comes to that. Um, but Dumas, I like the kid Dumas from uh PV. I think he can make that. I think he can make that D line push. I think it could be Isaiah. If you're going for all world D line, it will go Isaiah. Uh, Dumas, if I think that's his name on, on, uh, on, uh, PV, um, I'll take Owens. I'll take 91 from FAMU and I'll take Isaiah. That would be, that would be my, my five for my D lineman. It would be Houston, Dumas, Owens, uh, 91 from FAM and Isaiah land. That would be my starting five. My linebackers, I would take Keontae over Aubrey. And the only reason, and a lot of people will get mad at me because, about that, is because Aubrey is okay. Let me let me let me explain something to y'all. Um, Aubrey is like he's a carpenter with one tool, and it's a hammer. He swings it really well, all right, but he only has one tool in his toolbox, and that's coming downhill aggressively. Now, what other school could he have possibly run that at? and be that effective? That's the question. When, when I'm building an all-swack team, if I took you off your team and I put you on another team, would you be as productive? And I, and I have to say honestly, no, because not a lot of schools are going to just have you blitz in every... If you put Aubrey Miller on FAMU, he's not as effective because the FAMU linebackers don't blitz every play. They don't do that. So you're going to have to be in coverage. You're going to have to read, react, get there. Now, he's a blunt force instrument when he gets downhill. When he see ball, go get ball, he's a, he's a monster. But Keontae just does more. He has more in his toolbox. He has a hammer. He got a screwdriver. He got the little mallet. He got the little staple gun. He can do a lot more in space. And for me, that means more for me. That That's just me personally. So I'm just saying. Uh if we're doing all swag DBs, I would probably have to go with Nugget, Jacquez Payton from um from Alabama State, Marquise Bell at safety, and listen, I, I I'm gonna tell you straight up, ain't no no, I would I could take Cam. I, I'm not the, t- number twelve from uh, JSU would probably be the only other secondary player uh, he would be my second team i'll take cam and put him on my second team on my first team i'll probably take Coyer and marquise or either urshad i really like urshad um thick pin is not having a really good season this year um yeah so yeah but i could i could i could probably i would probably take marquise and Coyer uh at the safety positions i i, I wouldn't i wouldn't be bad or if if you really want to be, you know, you know, I would do more of a, I would do more of Cam. I like Cam in that strong safety position, uh, even though he can't really cover that well. I just think he's he's a he's a very he's definitely second team. If Cam don't Troutman, ah, that's a good one, Dante. Yeah, I'll take I'll take Marquise and Troutman. I'll take that. I I definitely do that. I'll definitely do that, and I, I would put I would put Cam on my second team. Um. Yeah, I'll, I'll put I'll put I would definitely put um Cam on my second team safety list. But you're absolutely right. It's gonna be a FAMU and Jackson State Fest. Uh I think Jackson State's probably gonna have more overall players uh than on the whole defense on all first and second team. I think they're gonna have more players uh on both sides. You, there's no denying that. I mean, literally, they're you can't score on them boys. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think that. That would be where it is. Um, but honestly, nobody in that secondary other than Cam and Nuggets should be on the should be on that list. Both first team or second team. Nobody other than them two guys. Because the secondary is not good. It's not. Shiloh, no. Should not be should not be nowhere. And I and he's probably going to be on the list because of his last name, but he definitely doesn't deserve it. Uh, who makes the special teams in the real mystery? Um um, yeah, you got to put, you got to put Newman at, you got to put, you definitely got to put Warren Newman as first team, especially punt returner. You got to put him. He's killing the game. Um, I don't, I don't really even know anybody else other than Newman, if I'm being honest that, um, uh, and you could probably put Zay at kick returner. I think he has the highest average in the swag, if I'm not mistaken. So I pick ASUD, uh, before I pick AMU. Yeah. I mean, but that just shows you, 
that just shows you. But yeah, you can pick them. But that just shows you how effective Troutman has been by itself. Uh, yeah, that's just that just shows you how how um how how Troutman has been impactful by himself. Just on you know just him being a special player, regardless of the defense or not. He's just a special player. Like yeah, yeah, I agree. They don't throw to me. Like if that's how I know these Bamas don't be watching football. That's how I know these Bamas don't watch football. Whoever picks that list, you Bamas don't watch football because it's no way that a, a corner that does not get thrown at is not first team something. Now, what I will tell you though is, what I will tell you is, is it's a possibility that both Alabama and their receivers take up the slot. Like Abdul and Hilaire, there's a high, it's a high possibility that both them Bamas are first team, first team swack receivers. And y'all can bitch and moan about Lanier. You can bitch and moan about uh no, bro. No. Alabama probably has Alabama and them probably has like the best two receivers in the swack, hands down. You know what I'm saying? So they probably take those two slots up, and then you could probably put Lanier on the second team, and you could probably put uh, Hickson or Josh Wilkes or whomever, but I can definitely have by far, by far put both of those boys at first team receiver coach of the year. Who man. Oh uh, man, 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 man. I would, it would have to be between Willie. Oh, it would have to be between Dooley. Depending on how Dooley finishes, it will either be between Dooley uh, Coach Prime and Simmons. Those will be my top three. Dooley, Coach Simmons, and Prime. Those will be my those will be my top three coaches of Coach of the Year. Especially and and probably PV. I would, if I'm giving honestly, honestly, I would have to probably give it to PV because of the lack of expectation. And if they finish strong and they win their division and they come into this, you got to give it to Coach Dooley because there was no expectation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there was literally no expectation for PV. Uh, so I, I would I would have to give it to it has to go to Texas Southern Coach of the Year. Uh if he makes a if he does a if he beats Southern and Jackson State, I will give him coach of the year. If he beats Southern and Jackson State, I'll give him coach of the year. Or if he beats Southern and Alcorn, I'll give him coach of the year. But uh right now, I'll probably have to go with Coach Dooley because there was no expectation to PV to do this. There's no expectation. So I, I I definitely have to, to probably put that one in. So we'll 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 definitely see. Um so yeah, that's oh the real question is who is the all swag team quarterback? Who will be the all swag team quarterback? And if I'm being honest right now, it'll have to be between jo it, my top three would be Jawan, Akil, and Shador. That would probably be, but it all depends on how Jawan and Shador finish out, uh, because Akil is probably going to average three hundred yards for the rest of the for the rest of the year, but his team is not going to be winning, and nobody wants somebody who who can't win. So, uh, so it'll probably be between Jawan and Shador for first team, and then whomever probably gets second team. Man, listen. Um, I, I don't know, man. I, the reason you, you could, I, I would put Shadour on the second team just because of his stat lines. Like his stat lines are not impressive. Like they're really Dak Prescott ish. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you want to give, if you want to give, uh, Shadour newcomer of the year, absolutely freaking Lutely. App, like hands down, absolutely freaking Lutely. But his stat line doesn't tell you that he won the game. Like, his stat lines never show that he won the game. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Jawan throwing for 300, Body, body throwing for 300, Akil throwing. Like, these Bamas got to throw 300 because they have to go win the game. Shador's stat lines don't ever tell you that he had to go win the game. So, for me, I would give him newcomer of the year uh, or freshman of the year. But, I, you know, but to give him the first team quarterback, it's, it's a high, uh-uh. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I agree with you, Mr. Campbell. He just, it, it's just not going to be enough for me. You know what I'm saying? It's just not, it's not going to be enough for me to give him first team, first team QB on an all swag team. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it takes a lot for him 
I think it takes a lot for him to, you know, to kind of get over that hump. Now, if he was doing, if he was doing a kill numbers and winning like he's winning, or if he was throwing for 300, 400 yards with like four touchdowns a game, like if he, if he did what he did against Alabama and him, like consistently, like three, four touchdowns a game, I'd be like, oh yeah, you, yeah, you probably can't keep him off that list at all. Probably couldn't, you probably couldn't keep him at all. But if you guys want to call in 516-259-9041, 516-259-9641, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at offscript underscore TV. Um, offscript membership, make sure you tune uh you uh s- sign into the membership membership. Oh my gosh, membership. Okay, membership. And also, members, I might have a special video for you coming up. All right, members only. I'm gonna have a members only video coming up real soon. It should be out either by this weekend or next week. Uh, it's going to be very, very fun and watching. So if you're a member, be on the lookout for a members only video coming up. All right. I'm going to put that in there so you guys can enjoy and, and get your money's worth. All right. So just be on the lookout for that. But if you want to call in 516-259-9041, 516-259-9041, I'm going to be on here for a little bit. Um, listen, I'm, you're probably not going to see me. You're, I'm, I'm probably going to come back on here on live to do my live predictions for the week. Matter of fact, I might as well just do it right now. Nah, I, I I titled the video Isaiah Land Breakdown. That don't make sense. I'll probably break it up or whatever. But, um, hey, caller, you live. Talk to me. Hey, what's up? What's good? Talk to me. Hey, I, hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so, um, I just got done watching your um your breakdown with Lamb, and seemed like the two best. Teams are built around defense. Um, they're just defensive teams. Mm-hmm. You think the team, did the coaches in the swag either change the way they build their teams because defense travels, and no matter what your quarterback does, your defense nine times out of ten is going to travel. The two best teams are built around defense. That may not be what everybody wants, but if you're talking about winning, you, you see what I'm getting at? You yeah. Think Maynard needs to change the way he's an offensive guy. You think he needs to switch the way he recruits and the way he builds his team. You think he do, you know, all these offensive guys, you think they need to change the way they build their team. Because uh, Bam, you and Jackson State are not going to go nowhere, and their defense is going to be stout probably as long as their coaches are there. But, okay, so this is this is my pushback to that, right? Because I'm an offensive-minded guy, so you, I'm a little biased. I'll, 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 I'll make that notice. I'm a little biased. When it comes to defenses, right, it all depends on if you have – if you have, like, a defense like, Jack, let's say, Fambio or Jackson State, but you have a quarterback like Shador, then you're straight. You're straight. You know, like, because Shador's not going to do anything to get you in trouble. He's not going to put you in bad situations, and he's going to make the right read. Now, he's not going to be the most – you know, explosive guy, but he's not going to, but when you're working with a Rashawn McKay at quarterback, that's where it gets kind of iffy because now you're like, yeah. you're so, you're so defense dependent that if your offense doesn't get right, you're not going to end up scoring that many points. So I think it's going to be more of, yeah. if I was Maynard, if I was coach Maynard, I really would have a, I would really have a measurement guy. Like if you're not six three six four, this, I can't recruit you because he has to be in a position right now where I got to get this fixed. I got to turn it around like offensively and defense. His trenches has to get better. He doesn't have to be a defensive minded guy, but you just got to get stops. My boy, if Texas Southern can get stops, if, if Valley can get stops, they're not an all defensive world team, but they can get stops. That's all you're looking for because what you want, if you're, if you're an offensive minded guy, you want to be in a shootout. But you want to be with a shootout with a team that can get you a couple stops. You know what I'm saying? So I think for him, I get you saying. Yeah, yeah. For him, I think it's more of a okay, let's fix. Cause if you if you watch the game, the only thing that was bothering Alabama and them was the offensive line. They could they could not block anybody. So you gotta fix yeah. that. That gets you somewhat in the game. And then if you get a couple stops, that gets you somewhat in the game. You see what I'm saying? So because yeah. the only reason Jackson State's allowed to score 61. It's because, goddamn, you gave them, like, 10 extra opportunities because they kept stopping you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's but, just, the team is ba- but the team is also based – Dion's a defensive guy. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, you would think his defenses should be good. He's a defensive guy. Mm-hmm. You know, most – so, I mean, Simmons happens to be the outlier because he's a quarterback. But his defense, his quarterback is so bad 
<laughs> even in his um I watched the um his um why not us? He even said, Hey, I think we might have to lean on our defense. So he knew early <laughs> McKay may not be it. And they've been winning on defense. So um after seeing that I thought about it, I was like the best two teams are by far defensive driven, you know. Should the swag might change, should some of the coaches change, you know, kind of the way they do things. Because mm-hmm. if they're going to be the best two teams, you know, you're going to have to compete with them. So, it would, you know, just want to see what your take was about it. If it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't hurt that if you have a great defense and you're trying to figure out your offense on the back end, that's not bad because, you, you know, the games are going to be low scoring. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to be – they're not going to be 34 to – Zero, 34 yeah. to seven. You know, the, the games are probably going to be 21, zero, 21, seven. So you always, you have a time to fix your offense. And if you have a bad yeah. defense, then, you know, the games are going to get out of hand because they're constantly scoring. So you have to, it's, yeah. you know, it's. I mean, it's, everybody says you rather win ugly. So it, it's easy to, it, like, you rather win, like, even the family Jackson State game, Dion won, but he wasn't satisfied. But at least you won. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm getting at? Mm-hmm. Like. You know, just want to, you know, I knew you was an offensive guy. <laughs> yeah, I so. am. I, I, I really am. Um, I'm not I'm not big on, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not big on defense. I mean, I know you need it, but I just I'm, I just love, you know, they say defense wins championships, but I'm like, you know, offense. And puts, they do. And off, you know offense that. <laughs> puts butts in the seats, though. You know what I'm saying? Like that's nobody's coming to see the game for a defensive battle. Just nobody's coming to see that. Um, if. I, if I was Maynard, I'm I I probably change out my D coordinator and I and I definitely focus on the trench play. You know what I'm saying? I definitely focus on the trench play because what you realize with trench play is that I cannot have a great corner, but he still have great production based off the quarterback not having time to throw. You get what I'm saying? Because yeah. if you really if you want to be honest, that's what Jackson State does. That's what Jackson State does. Yeah, their their secondary I mean, is I mean, I mean, not that good. I mean, even um. Even Dennis Thurman said, "All you in college, all you need is one good corner." So they got that one good corner, and everything else is like, "Okay, you're not going to have time to even get to the other side." But I got this one good corner where I know you're not even touching his way. Yeah. So. You know what I'm saying? Because but, then you, yeah, man, you force feed everybody. It was a good you, breakdown, and it had me think about that. Like, okay, I wonder what these these other SWAT teams are going to do when you got two defenses who are. Head and shoulders better than everybody else. Mm-hmm. No matter who's one and two, you could figure out that. But I'm like, the other teams are definitely going to catch up defensive wise. Because I think Willis Simmons will get his quarterback handled. I don't think it'll be McKay, though. No, I <laughs> agree. The tour ain't going nowhere. No, I, I definitely agree <laughs> with you. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, uh, I mean, for him, Coach Simmons to be a quarterback, you know, he's looking for that guy. Um, yeah. So we'll see, though, man. But and and even in the documentary, like you said, he knew his defense, his team was going to lead. He, he knew it in the documentary. He said, "Yeah, this team's yeah. going to be a defensive based team." So and he saw it coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So and it, it doesn't hurt because when you, if if Coach Simmons had this team with a freshman quarterback, I would be okay with it because the freshman. It's the same thing with Shador, but he's a little ahead of schedule. But you know, if you had a uh, Andrew Body, if you had a Noah Bowden, you know you're going to take your bumps and bruises with that quarterback, but you think he's going to be that guy in the future. So you're okay with that. But yeah, the one problem is, is that who's to say your defense is going to be this good next year. When you, them seniors leave, when everybody like, you know, Jackson State is a team full of like, they're not a very young team and not as young as people think. Right. So you got Houston. He's gone. You're going to have Aubrey. He's gone. Yeah. Uh, uh, Owens is going to be gone. Hamp. Huh? Hamp is leaving. Hamp, I think, Hampton's I think, no, I think Hamp has another year. I think Hampton has one more year, if I'm not mistaken. I think Hampton has one more oh, year. Okay. Uh, but you know, but Niles is young. Uh, Coinus is young. Um, yeah. Hamp got another year. You got most of the secondary is all coming back, so that's growing with you. But your D line and your front seven, your, you know, those mega hitters, those are probably the three places you're gonna have to replace the most. But if you got as many cruises, um. If you got as many crews as Dion's coming in, you can probably find somebody to replace that. You know, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be yeah. the hardest. They find a quarter to you know plug in this for a year. Yeah, while yeah. Instead of it's a, you, along slowly. You rather be in a Dion situation where you're plugging one or two spots 
than a Maynard situation when you were yeah. replacing your whole D oh, line. Man. You know what and, I'm saying? And, and the thing with Maynard is that, and he's an Aggie. He he came from D two, so he brought his whole squad from D two. Recruiting on the D one level is a lot different, and his D C is have is gonna have to know that. He's gonna have to get used to that. Recruiting on the D two level is definitely different than recruiting on the D one level. Like he's gonna have to get used to you going against. Not only you going against the swag, you going against other FCS programs. Yeah, so yeah. they're gonna have to get used to that. So he, they they need to live in the portal. They need to live. Listen, they need to live in the portal for real, for real. And I hate yeah. to say that, like get every, yeah. get everybody now nah, because fam, you and Florida State are right across from each other. And as a person who went to A and T, I remember when for some reason somebody got kicked off Florida State. They was going right across the street to fam you. So anybody who doesn't get in the fit of Alabama, who for whatever reason they need to be going right down the street. It's too much talent at Alabama not to. You let got me, all burned me, up. Like, everybody can't go there, and everybody don't always let. <laughs> let me tell you this, and I'm going to let you go on this one, but if Dion sends two or three kids to the pros, like, let's say Houston goes pro, like, gets drafted. Not not undrafted, but gets drafted. I think him and Evans will both get drafted, him and Owens. If they do, if I, they do, you, the SWAC is in for a problem. Swack is in for it uh, <laughs> because what, they're, they're, I'm dead serious, man. Because you see, this year he can go into it saying, "Hey, you know, we're trying to build something. We're doing something new." If if he gets two or three kids drafted, then he can say, "Yeah, it's you, be- you see what I did with him. You see what I did with him. Well, I can do it with in the first year. Come on, man. I, I can <laughs> do it first, with you in the, in the if in you, the first year. Come on, if you buy in, if you buy in, you believe in what we're doing." I can. This can happen to you, and that's all kids want to hear. What Dion said, yeah. I can go to the pros. That's that's it. You're done. Like it's it's going to be a it's yeah. going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard. It's hard. It's already hard recruiting out, out recruiting Dion anyway. But when he has success yeah. and you see results off of it, oh my god, bro, it's it's not going to be fair, bro. It's not going to be fair. I'm just telling you, it's not going to be fair. So yeah, I think the only yeah, I think it's going to be them and FAMU for a while. I like FAMU. It was my second choice um, after A and T, <laughs> but but yeah, man, I wanted to get you. That's gonna be interesting about that defense. So, um, but appreciate it, man. Hey, appreciate the call, my day. guy. All right. Yeah. So, oof, do you think Corbin is getting Keith Corbin the receiver? Eh, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. He, I haven't seen, he's not special to me. You know what I'm saying? So he doesn't pop off the screen to me. And plus they don't throw the ball enough. Like if you're a wide receiver, if you're a wide receiver in this offense, you should be pretty mad at yourself. That's just, that's just my opinion. I would, I would be pretty mad at myself if I pick Jackson state thinking I'm a, if I'm a receiver, to think that I'm going to come here and get that mad numbers with Shador. Now, maybe his sophomore, junior, senior year, uh, you might get that production out of him. But as of right now, nah, I'll just be mad. I'll just be hella mad. So, nah, bro. Mm-mm. I would, I would, I would definitely, if I was, a, if I was a top flight receiver, I would definitely go to Alabama and them. Cause I know they're going to throw the ball 30, 40 times. I know I'm going to get my opportunities. But if you're a receiver at Jackson State right now, I mean, I'm happy I'm winning. But my stats ain't. Hey, listen, I I play wide receiver. Now I wouldn't call myself a diva, but I like to get the ball. I like to touch the ball. So give me the ball more. Throw me the ball. Like what are we doing? So that would be my issue. I mean, because do you see Dion taking TC Taylor with him once he leaves JSU? Uh, no, because I think it's T.C. Taylor's job once Dion leaves. So I don't I, I think he really I think T.C. Taylor really wants to be like the the comedy and the the Pete Richardson. Like you stay with a team for about, you know, five, eight years and you just build you build that consistency, you build that tradition and program back up to where it is and you maintain that standard. I think he really wants to see that because he he bleeds blue. 
Like he is a he's a JSU alum. He's he played there, all-time leading receiver. Like he wants to see that. It's no different if I went back to my high school and coached and I want to see them do well. It's just something, it's just a part of it that you know you you want to see grow. If you're a wide out, go where they will give you a chance to make plays. I don't know what my man here to yeah, in Jackson State, they don't give you a chance. Uh, that's my personal opinion. What about Lotto? Um, I don't know. I don't know about Lotto. Um, he's not. Listen, man, like when I, when I think of a receiver, like I just, I want to see like, you got to dominate. And I don't think Lotto dominates. Like he won. I don't think they called the right plays at Jackson State until T.C. Taylor got there. That's one. And two, like, he just doesn't dominate for me. Like, he just does not dominate. Like, he, he just doesn't. Like, it's it, it's like you need, like, okay, like Hilaire, right? Like, you see Hilaire catch a screen against Gramlin and just take off. Like, he just pulls away from everybody. Like, I don't see that from Lanier. I don't see the slant go into the house. I don't see the, the boom, boom, uh, like the boom bop and he get out and then he, he, he goes all the way. Like, I don't see that from Lanier. I don't see that. I see, I see special in Trevante because he plays, he plays the ball over, over your head. I see special in him. Um, I like Dalen when he was here. I love Dalen. I, Cause he has that big playability. boy. You make more excuses than a doctor who gives you bad medicine. Shut the hell up, bro. You just stay making excuses. Shut up. All right. So my thing is, is not, is, I don't know, man. Like when I, when I see these, the only person to me, honestly, off the Jackson state, off the Jackson state, um, wide receiver that are that special is Newman. Newman is different. Like, I don't like I, I he is just different. He he he's always he's always in the right place. He's the he's the hardest matchup to me, honestly. He's the hardest matchup. He's the easiest throw to because he's always open based off his route running ability. He's special to me. The rest of these dudes, they're okay. They're just okay. Like Abdul, special. Josh Wilkes from uh UAPB, special. Uh, who else? You know, Hilaire special. Um, you and you just see the big time plays that they consistently make because they're put in opportunities to make those plays, and they they've been they they've been in a system that wants them to shine. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I think as Shadua grows, maybe the confidence of them letting them, you know, um, make make let him drop back and throw 25, 30 times. It happens more, and then you see the you see like a. You know the the Davis kid, the freshman, he'll he'll come back, and you see Trevante, and they'll they'll start to expand their roles, and uh, Malachi and all those kind of boys. I think you'll kind of see that. But as of right now, nah, none. Of, I would, I would take Newman. That that would be the only guy from the receiver core that I would like. I'm taking Newman, and and maybe Lanier. And that's a that's a that's a uh. like if I had if I had a starting four, if I if I had four receivers to pick from the swag right right here right now. Uh, it will probably be Josh Wilkes, Abdul, Hilaire, and Newman. Those will be my four because you can't guard them one-on-one. -on -one. You can't guard none of those boys one-on-one. -on -one. And Hilaire can beat you down. He can beat you in the media. Abdul is just tough, strong, physical, beat you in the media route. Josh Wilkes is a straight burner, and he can beat you in the media. And then I got Warren Newman, who's my security blanket. Like, I, I do that. But see, Trevante Rucker is not it's not consistent. Like I need consistency and they don't put him in a in a in a role to show consist. You see one highlight catch. Oh, my God. He jumped up and grabbed. OK. 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 Like and then he catch the touchdown to Alabama and them with an underthrown ball. OK. Like show me consistently special like Xavier. Like Xavier is consistently special with a bad quarterback. So I can swap out Josh Wilkes for Xavier because he's special. When he gets the ball in his hands, he's special. The, the receivers from Jackson State, I have not seen them special with the ball in their hand. Now, they might make an, an amazing catch here or there, but they're not special with the ball in their hand. Like, I'm telling you, like, you can watch the game against Jackson State. Abdul was dragging two, three defenders before he gets pulled down. Like, that's 
Like, let's be real. You know what I'm like that's special. And y'all supposed to have a great defense. He's dragging Bama's Hilaire one hand catching that. Jack. Like he had over a hundred. Uh, uh, he had over a hundred yards. Of probably the first receiver to go over hundred yards against Jackson State. You know what I'm saying? So, but you haven't seen Davis in the game. Like that's the like the same the same argument I have for now is Gaddy is the same argument I'm gonna have for Davis. I haven't seen you play, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. Texas high school football is is damn near D three D two. But I have not seen you play. So I can't give you credit for something you have not done. Like, you haven't done anything. But when he steps on the field next year and he does his thing, I'm like, oh, okay, he's he's legit. That's how I look at it. So, yeah. And I, I like Newman a lot. I like Newman a lot, too. And, I, and I've said it numerous of times when it comes to Jackson State. Like, he he should be the engine that makes Jackson State like he should he revs the engine. If you get Newman going, everybody else should feed off of that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else should feed off that because you cannot guard him one on one. You can't guard him. You just can't. You know what I'm saying? So he should be the engine that makes everything go with Jackson State for real. If I'm being honest, like that's just my personal opinion. But you know, I'm a hey 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a hater, so I just, you know, I take it in stride. I just keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? So don't bother me. Okay, so that's that's one play. That's one play, my boy. Like, what is what does that mean? He tackled him one on one. Okay. But other players can't tackle him one on one. Did that take away from him not being special? Because if that's the case, you know how many Jackson State receivers get tackled one-on-one -on -one consistently? Consistently. I It's been one player to break a tackle. There's, let me see. There's been one player to break a tackle and go the distance, and that's that post route against Tennessee State. Name another, name another player that's broken a tackle and gone the distance. Don't worry. I'll wait. Nobody's nobody's denying that you won. And this, I, yo, listen, I, I'm with the shits today, bro. I am so with the shits today. Stop being a bitch and call in. I'm and I and I and I mean that on everything, bro. I'm I'm with the shit today. Like I'm I'm so with the shit today. It's my girl's birthday. I'm with it. Stop being a bitch and call into the show. And I mean that on everything I love. And you can y'all can say whatever you want. Stop being a bitch and call into the show because you always got shit to say, but you never call in to back nothing, nothing you say up. So stop being a girl and call into the show. It's just that simple. And you won't. I know you won't. And I'm going to keep the same energy when you call in, too. Because all you do is get in the comments. You talk all this stuff. You never call into the show. It's a call-in show. And that's the same shit that be killing me. All these niggas that call me a hater be on my dick watching my show. For real. For real. That's the shit that be killing me. All the trollers, all the haters, y'all be on my dick watching the show in my comments and never call in. I'm like, bro, it's a call in show. Call in, call in. Like we can have the discussion over chat, and I and I can embarrass your point because you don't have a point. You don't have it, and then you'll tell me, oh, stay, stay out your chat. It's my show. It's my show. So let's not do this. Call into the show. It's a call in show for a reason. Like, I leave the number. Matter of fact, I'll make it big and bold. I'll make it big and bold. It's right It's right here. The call-in show is right here. Stop being a girl and call in. Like, I don't get that. Like, I don't understand it. I really don't. Like, you, and it'd be the same. Listen, everybody, if you're on the radio, right? It's, it's the same example if, you, if you're on the radio. If you're on the radio, and you hear somebody talking bad about your, your team, you're like, oh man, he don't know what he's talking about. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I apologize, Malik. Yeah, Malik Doobie. Malik Doobie, listen, I apologize to his mom, to Malik, and Tyson too, because Tyson, I know you be watching the show with your mom. Tyson too, I apologize. I I will apologize for that one. So I'm sorry. I, I I'm sorry. I I got out of got out of character real quick. But for real, man, stop being scary. Stop being scary. Just call into the show. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what it's about. If you got all this smoke and energy, call into the show and tell me how I don't know what I'm talking about. Same thing with all those trollers, bro. Like I I I live this. I do this. 
That's why I make it a calling show. I'm not swag buzz. I don't hide behind a profile image. I don't ever show my face. I go to all the games. I tell you where game I'm going to. So all that energy you bring in, bring it to me when I'm at the game. I mean that. I mean that. Like, for real. I'll be at the Soul Bowl. I'll be at the Boombox Classic. I'll be in, in Abena. I'll be with FAMU and Valley at in Abena. I'll be there. I'm there. So what are we talking about? So, yeah, so them, I don't hide behind DJ Unreal, Unmedia Truth, whatever his name is. I don't hide behind, I don't hide behind no, no images. I, my, my channel don't look like this. I don't talk like this. So you don't know who telling you this. I do this. You know what I'm saying? So that's where it is. So, yeah, so all you, so all you, oh, I can't say it because it's a family show. All you Bamas who be riding my train, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> all you Bamas that be riding my train and still be in my comments, still hating and can't turn it off lest I'm talking to you, calling to the show, but you won't. So I get it. I get it. So, yeah. <laughs> he said, I've been here. Day How you <laughs> I give it. To I listen, I'll give it to you. He said, I'll be here day one. OK. He said, I ain't going nowhere. I'll tell you, just call into the show. You got your girl on the channel, sports and then SEC by Nico. Call into the show. Shoo. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. We had conference with Murray, Jason, but not even playing Murray's give me score. So, yeah. So let me, okay, let me get off this. Uh, my girl just walked in from her, 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 her event. I'm going to get back on here. I'm going to get back on here in about 3.15. Uh, about 310, 315. I'm gonna do my picks for the week and I'm gonna be out. All right. Boomboxing this thing. Hopefully, my jazz can get the defense. Hey, and, and anybody listen. Once again, I'm I'm with the smoke. Willie Scott, communications director, sports ID. Like you know, you got my email. Stop playing with me at Southern. I asked you to get me media passes. Stop, don't stop it. I've texted you, I've emailed you. I, listen, stop. Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. You making me feel like a chick trying to check you down. Don't do that to me. All right. So I know some Southern people in here. I asked him for media passes. He told me to email him. I emailed him. He ain't give it to me. I texted him. He ain't respond. So Willie Scott, I, you know what? Come on now. Don't do me like that. I'm trying to get into the, I'm trying to get into the boom box. Stop playing. All right. That's all I'm saying. So Be in the, I be walking through the tailgate and I be out. Oh, listen, I don't know if anybody follow me on IG. I, the, so in the Alabama AM, I'm gonna say this and I'm about to get off. For the Alabama AM game, I walked into the Jackson State meet and greet when they all the I do this like with the Alabama AM shirt on. I do this. I don't talk about it. I really be y'all be trolling and I be I'm trolling real life. Okay. Watch my Instagram live. I troll and and I took the girl. I took my girl with me. I felt bad because you know she ain't really, she she not really about that life. You know she she you know you know she not really trollish. You know she just you know say her little thing and you know. But I'll be trolling. I be troll. I be trolling and strolling. I do this. I walked in the Jackson State meet and greet. I saw the pregame show. You know they ain't gonna speak. You know they scary. Uh, Ken Rashard. I call him out. Ken Rashard. Saw them at the bar. You know what I'm saying? They don't speak. I, I told my girl, hey, that's the pregame show over there. You know what I'm saying? Of course, they not going to speak. So, I, you know, I walk around. I saw Miller. You know, Miller said, what's up? Because me and Miller cool. You know, regardless of, you know, we still cool. So, you know, I see, I see. you know, saw Kevin Mathis. Saw DB coach Kevin Mathis. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking smack to him. He talking smack to me. You know, pretty Tony. I see him. That's, uh, you know, that's Dion's guy. So, I, I be, I do this. Come on. Di didn't we? Blue, didn't we walk through the... Don't I be walking through tailgates? I be walking through ta Jackson State tailgates. I do all that. I troll. I troll. Okay? I do this. I don't play. I don't play. So, listen, when I go at the Soul Bowl, I'm going to be... I'm going to walk my happy ass all around that stadium. Who going to stop me? Who gonna stop me? And Dennis Driscoll, Dennis Driscoll. And if you see me, say what's up in the streets, Dennis Driscoll. Uh huh. Yeah. You and I. You know who you is, Dennis Driscoll. 
you see me, say what's up. I'm going to leave it at that. So until next time, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler. God bless.